We are so happy to welcome Diana onto our Tennis Channel desk. Thank you for joining us here. I know it's been an emotional couple of weeks for you. So first, just how are you doing? How's your family doing? Hi, yeah, thank you. It's really nice to be uh, to be here. And um, well, my, my parents are at home now in Odessa. And uh, it's very hard because, uh, you know, the situation is very crazy right now there. It's pretty scary. And they all the time have to be uh, or in the parking or in the underground somewhere. Uh, they don't usually spend a lot of time in the apartments because we live pretty high on the floor 12. So it's uh, very scary. And um, I try to stay in touch with them. It's not really, uh, we are not talking too much. But uh, when they have the internet and uh, when they are not in the parking, <laughs> we usually talk. And um, I hope they watched my match yesterday. <laughs> Uh, you, you certainly fought for yourself, for your country, like you've been saying. And uh, take us back to, to when you left the country. What was the process to get you and your sister Ivana out of the country? What did you go through? Oh, it's very, very emotionally. And um, if I remember, uh, in our plans, it was to leave with father to Lyon on 24th in the evening. And on 23rd, we packed already everything and all was good. We wake, up, we wake up early in the morning because of the bombs and because of the rackets. And I'm running to the kitchen. I'm asking, like, what is this? What, what is going on? And my father said the war has started. I, I, I couldn't believe. I was like, is that a dream or is that for real? Then we start to read news. Then we see what is going on in other cities. And our plans completely changed. They closed the sky, we couldn't really fly. Uh, we wanted to leave by car, but uh, they closed it as well, the, some borders, we couldn't leave. And it was also very scary to drive by car because they were shooting everywhere uh, with the bombs, with the rackets. Even when I went with my younger sister in the morning uh, to the shop, uh, not so far, not so close, there was a bomb and the sun was super crazy. It, it, was, it was very, very scary. And uh, late in the evening of 24th, uh, my father made the decision that me, my mother, and uh, my sister, we're going to leave. Uh, we're going to leave uh, next morning uh, by car uh, through the Ismail to cross the border uh, to Romania. So early in the morning, we drive there. And it was a very big, uh, very big queue there with the cars. And it was uh, very hard to cross the border. But we 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 drive till till uh, the end we could, so we did so we wouldn't spend a lot of time in, in staying in the queue because my father didn't want me and my sister and mother to leave when it's too too dark, you know. Mm. Uh, so we we crossed the border by foot, and I remember that the last minute we decided that mother gonna stay with father and we have to leave alone with sister. And it was, uh, it was uh, very emotionally, we were crying a lot. And uh, I think I even posted the video where my sister is hugging my father and crying. And I, 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 tr I tried to hold myself uh, as I could because, uh, um, you know, the, the worst thing it was uh, that is that you have thoughts in your head that when you're going to see your parents next time. Because my father was telling me that, okay, Diana, um, now you have a responsibility on you, it's your younger sister, and uh, now you have to build your future because you never know how this war gonna end up, and you have to stay all the time close to each other, you have to stay together, support, and now is, <laughs> maybe he said that for a joke, but uh, now I understand his words when he said, now uh, your own war gonna start. And I, I now I understand how tough it is, how hard, how hard, how hard it was to cross the border and to see your parents on the other side of the river, and um, you don't know you don't know what to expect and how it's gonna finish everything. So yeah, after that we crossed the border. We le we went to the Bucharest. Uh, we slept a couple hours there in the hotel, and then we uh, we flew to Lyon. And uh, yeah, the tournament was there also very, very hard. And uh, but a lot of people after I made a post on Instagram, a lot of people were texting me with the support, with the words of help. And I didn't expect the people going to react like that from all the world. 
And yes, the tournament it was, um, I didn't play just for myself, I played for my country. I really wanted to show that where I could show it, that I'm also fighting for Ukraine, that I'm also Ukrainian. And uh, I don't know, I'm very proud of the people who is now in Ukraine and fighting for, uh, for our lives. It's incredible strength, Diana, and, and just heartbreaking to hear that story and having to leave your parents, you know, at the border and, and, and starting your own war. Uh, as your father said, uh, you know, a, a former tennis player, Sergei Stokovsky, went back to Ukraine to, to fight for your people. What was your reaction when you heard about that? Well, to him, I want to give uh, huge respect. And uh, you could you can say that he is a real man who stands by by his family, by his city, by his country. And, um, you know, the sad thing is that you know these people and you know how it's dangerous and you're very worried about it. And uh, I wish him that he stayed safe and uh, big thanks to him because I know him personal personally. And uh, every person now in Ukraine is a hero because Ukraine is not a big country. But we are a free country, and uh, every person is standing by it. And um, a lot of children now are dying, a lot of uh, normal families, and um, our, uh, our hospitals, our schools, our normal houses are getting shot by, by rockets and everything. And uh, our um, pregnant women are giving the births in the underground. And what is going on there is super crazy. And uh, important now for Ukraine is that our sky will be closed so we don't get shot and uh, we have uh, more, chan more chances to save lives of, uh, of uh, people. And I think it's the most important now um, in all the world. It's the most important is lives. So. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say a lot about it. But uh, the war, uh, the the um, the war is a death. So it's uh, I I wouldn't wish to anybody to get through what is going on there now. With all of that going on, you get to the final in Lyon. Uh, what was it like for you there, and how were you able to fight? Uh, when I just arrived there, I uh, I didn't even think about my matches, how I'm going to play. I, I couldn't really practice. I couldn't really sleep before the tournament. I didn't uh, I didn't have any, anything left, no energy, no emotions. And uh, But when I went on court, when I could uh, hear uh, how people are supporting me, uh, they really helped me to, to get through, you know, and to find somewhere this power. And... Um, yeah, as I said, I was really motivated by Ukrainian people. I think that's what really helped me to go to the finals. A an incredible show of strength and fight and grit from you. Uh, the WTA, ATP, ITF, and the four majors are actually making a joint donation of $700,000 in aid of humanitarian relief and to support the Ukraine Tennis Federation. What kind of res uh, support have you received fr from other players on tour since you've been back? Uh, well, when uh, everything just started and I made the post, a lot of players are texting me with the support and if I need anything, they are ready to help me. And uh, I'm not going to say the names because it's a lot of players. <laughs> um, and uh, even in the tournaments, everybody are showing, um, I don't know even how to say it. They, 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 they show that they feel the pain, you know, even if they say that we don't really know what, how exactly you feel, you can really feel the support from them. And um, yeah, I mean, there is a great support from, from the people around me. And yeah. What, what message do you have for the people in Ukraine right now? Oh, the message. Um, well, first of all, I want to say that our people are the most strong people and uh, we they have a strong spirit because they, uh, without anything, they stand now there and they're fighting for themselves, for, the peop for people, for Ukraine. And um, they're heroes 
And I don't know really what to say much about about our people and about our country, but um, a big, big respect and a uh, big thanks to them because what they get through, it's uh, they're just surviving and uh, behind all this story, they're people who just want to have a peace in, in our country and um, just want to say thanks to them for what they're making. <laughs> And how about the folks watching in America that, that see this war going on? You know exactly what's happening. What message do you have for the folks here in the States about what is going on in your country? Well, uh, I, I don't have much to say. It's just to ask for support. And um, I would like that a lot of people could understand and could help us to make something that the sky in Ukraine work close. Uh, it's very important for us and um, everything I can say and ask is just for the support. I think that's the, m the most important thing that we, we need right now. Well, you're, you're a symbol of hope for your country back home. You see the, the Ukrainian flag behind us here on the grounds yeah. at Indian I, Wells. Yeah, I can feel and I think all Ukrainians can feel the support. Everybody is... Uh, is showing that they really stand by the Ukraine. And it's very nice to see from all people from all the world. And uh, there is a lot of meetings and uh, a lot of people are really as well trying to find in the way they can to show that the Ukraine is uh, deserving much better than, it's, than Ukraine is getting through right now, you know? So I also try to always have a f Ukrainian flag and or to have it even here. Yes, Ukraine. thank you for the pin. Uh, yeah, thank you for wearing. <laughs> yes, uh, it's really nice. I love I love America. I love California, and uh, I love being here. It's a really nice tournament. I'm sad I lost when I got the opportunity with the Vicar, but it was a really tough match, and I really couldn't hold it anymore emotionally. But uh, next year, I hope when there's going to be peace in, in our country, and I hope it's going to stay in all the world, I will be back here, and uh, I will be able to compete. And uh, for sure, I'm going to remember for the rest of my life uh, the support I got from all the people uh, off court, on court, and... Uh, um, I really appreciate it. Well, Diana, we support you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you and your sister play doubles tomorrow yes. here at Indian Wells, your 15-year-old sister that you're now basically taking care of. And, you know, we send our love, our prayers, and our strength to you and your family back in Ukraine, and uh, wish you all of the best. Thanks for joining us here today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Diana Yastremska with us here on Tennis Channel. Of course, the Tennis Plays for Peace initiative, all the tours, the WTA, ATP, ITF, and the four majors making a joint donation of $700,000 in aid of humanitarian relief and to support the Ukraine Tennis Federation. You may see the pins around the grounds at Indian Wells as well as the flag behind us here as the tennis world comes together to support Ukraine in this crisis. Diana, thanks again.